Hi guys, today I'll be doing my first ever PC build as I've generally gone for pre-built PCs as it was a quicker option and the last two PCs I had were on loan which I've now returned so I thought this is now a good opportunity to finally get around to building a PC myself which I'll be using on my gaming desk and sim racing rig for 1440p and 4k gaming together with using it for video editing and general usage. I'll include details in the description below including purchasing links if you wanted to build a similar PC but before I begin if you're new to the channel hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to get notified of my next release and if you have any questions drop them in the comment section below. Let's begin by running through the components I'll be using together with the price for each one. So for the case I've got the Asus Tough Gaming GT302 ARGB case in black to match the aesthetics of my gaming setup. It costs just under £155. It's an ATX mid tower PC case with four 140 by 28 millimeter ARGB fans for high airflow, and the tempered glass and mesh panels are interchangeable. The motherboard I've chosen is the ROG Maximus Z790 Dark Hero, which costs just under £530. It supports DDR5, has five M.2 slots, there's Wi Fi 7 support, and it has a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN port. There's lots of fast USB connectivity options with quick charge support and optimized VRM thermals. The processor I'll be using is the Intel Core i9 14900K processor with 24 cores, so 8P cores and 16E cores up to 6.0 GHz, which costs just under £520. For the CPU cooler, I'll be using the ROG Strix LC3360 ARGB CPU liquid cooler, which has a 360 degree rotatable water block. This is 360 millimeters and has three fans coming in at just under 234 pounds. For the RAM, I've gone for the Kingston Fury Beast RGB XMP DDR5 RAM, and I've got four 32 gigs, providing 128 gigs of RAM for around 400 pounds. I've gone a bit over the top with this, but for multitasking, this should be awesome. For the storage, I've gone for two terabytes of Kingston Fury Renegade PCIe 4.0 NVMe M.2 SSD, costing around 180 pounds, offering crazy fast read and write speeds. The GPU I've gone for is the Asus GeForce RTX 4080 16GB GDDR6X Noctua OC Edition coming in at just under £1,600. It's optimised for minimal noise with it having two Noctua NFA1225 PWM fans and has a tailor-made heatsink. And finally for the power supply, I've got the ROG Strix 1000 Watt Gold Aurora Edition which costs just under £230. It has dual ball fan bearings for longer lifespan with it being ATX 3.0 compatible and it can pipe up to 600 watts of power to a PCIe Gen 5.0 graphics cards together with it having really low noise levels. So price wise the total build came in at around £3,830. Let me briefly run you through the build process I followed for this to give you a bit of an idea of what's involved in building a PC. Starting with the motherboard, open the socket for the CPU, then take the CPU and place it in position, ensuring the notches on the left and right match up. You can now secure it in position, close the lid and the top cover pops off, then secure the CPU in position. Onto installing the RAM, unlock the slots and push each stick in, ensuring the notch at the bottom lines up with the notch on the RAM. And as you push it in, it locks into place. Opening up the metal cover on the motherboard reveals the location to install the M.2 storage. Remove the sticky plastic and then you can carefully position the storage in position and lock it into place. Then reattach the heatsink cover. Removing the two plastic covers from the top of the board and the cover at the side that goes over the ports. We can move on to installing the motherboard in the case and securing it into position with the screws provided. Next, removing two screws for the slots in preparation for the GPU. Remove the covers, install the GPU and secure it to the case with the two screws previously removed. The card comes with an adjustable upstand which needs to be extended and it can be placed in the corner to help to keep the card stable due to the weight of it. Onto the power supply, I've plugged in all the connections I think I'll need. Place it into the case and secure it in position with four screws. Now I can assemble the all-in-one CPU cooler. First taking the large radiator, attach the three fans to it. 
Now, one mistake I did do was to install the fans the wrong way around. So air would have been blown into the case, but reading up on this, it needs to pull the hot air out. So later on, I flipped all the fans around the other way onto securing the AIO in position at the top of the case with the screws provided, onto securing the pump, first attach the bracket for Intel CPUs at the back of the motherboard, then attach screws on each of the corner from the front, then take the pump and remove the cover. There's no need to attach thermal paste as it's already on the pump. Place it in position and tighten it with the thumb turn screws. And then I use a screwdriver to tighten it slightly more. And finally, connect up all the cables. Now, once the PC was built, in terms of issues, I did do a little bit of troubleshooting as the motherboard expected a CPU fan. So I disabled that in the BIOS as I was using the all-in-one and installing Windows, it couldn't see the LAN port or Wi-Fi. So I bypassed that and installed it without internet connectivity but connectivity was working immediately after the OS was installed. Plus I've updated the BIOS to the latest release, so all good. And as this is my first build, I have to say it was pretty easy to install as a newbie doing this. And time-wise, it took about half a day to assemble the parts with me filming at the same time and half a day of installing all my games and software on there. Doing a performance test with Cinebench R23 and really no surprise, it came in at number one against the CPUs list in both the multi-core and single core tests. Software wise, the Armory Crate software from Asus can be used to control a lot of the settings from allowing you to use AI overclocking, AI cooling, setting the fan speeds to adjusting the Aurora sync where all the RGB lights in your case sync at the same time and you can even turn them off together with updating drivers. Plus there's many other options included with the software. In terms of gaming, I've tested the PC on my 32 inch 4K OLED gaming monitor, which is the LG 32 GS95 UED-B. And I've also tested on my 39 inch QHD ultrawide 1440p OLED gaming monitor, which is the LG 39 GS95QE. I've set the refresh rate to 240Hz on both the monitors and the in-game graphics to the highest setting. So on Forza in 4K, I was seeing 87 FPS and in 1440p, I was getting 102 FPS. In Fortnite in 4K, I got 76 FPS and in 1440, I got 88 FPS. In Apex in 4K, I was getting 112 FPS and in 1440, I got 138 FPS. On F1 2023 in 4K, I got 103 FPS and in 1440, I was getting 130 FPS. In GTA 5 in 4K, I was seeing 47 FPS, and in 1440, I was getting 79 FPS. In Far Cry in 4K, I was seeing 84 FPS, and in 1440, I was getting around 115 FPS. And finally in COD in 4K, I was seeing around 133 FPS, and in 1440, I got around 160 FPS. So gaming wise, performance was pretty impressive. And obviously you can improve those FPS values by taking down some of the graphic settings to a slightly lower setting. But nevertheless, performance was pretty impressive. Productivity wise, so using Microsoft suite of Office products, browsing the web, streaming, and even using it for creativity purposes. So video editing, Photoshop, Lightroom, etc. It really is insanely fast handling anything you throw at it and with 128 gigs of RAM, it's perfect for multitasking. Sound levels wise, whether you're using it for creativity purposes or gaming, it's really quiet. Setting the fan speeds to silent in the armory crate, and there's a very subtle hum, and when you push the PC to its limits when gaming, noise levels are still pretty low, so really impressed by this. So there you have it, you come to the end of another video and I hope you've enjoyed watching me build my first gaming PC and hopefully it's helped anyone thinking of doing a PC build themselves. As I have to say, it really isn't difficult at all and I've included details in the description below including purchasing links. If you have any questions on this, let me know in the comments below. Plus, let me know if you think I should have done anything differently as part of this build as I really am a newbie at building PCs. So for those of you who got to the end of this video, please leave a comment with new PC as it's awesome to see who's got to the end of my video and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. You can follow me on my socials. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be notified of my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.